Hello everybody. So this is a reaction video to knowing your audience. Now I think I would have to wish you all a belated Valentine's Day and I hope you enjoyed the day and I hope there was not much gnashing amongst you. So straight to the point, Lane Tete. Lane Tete says, hello sir, how can missing out a detail affect one in developing a buyer or customer persona it's highly possible one cannot factor all details in developing a customer persona lane you're right it is difficult to factor in everything when developing a buyer persona so first of all what it's advisable to do is do not create just one customer persona create numerous all the possible kinds of people all the possible characters or persona that might be interested in your product or your service that way it would help you be able to reach out when I, I when I say reach out I mean expand to cover all the possible people who would be interested in your product or service having said that you may still even when you get um, when you create numerous persona you may still be unable to get everything. So what is done is, as people are purchasing your product or your service, you do surveys to find out more about the kind of people who are buying your product or service so that you factor them in into your next buyer or customer persona um, creation in your next advertisement. I, ho I hope that is clear. Right. So we go to Joseph Jotepe. Joseph, if I have murdered your name, forgive me. Uh, Joseph says, in relation to building a persona, even with near accurate data, as you put it, a prototype, is it possible therefore to still miss the objective after building a prototype? Joseph, I think your question is similar to the question I just answered that is if i understand your question as in you may get near accurate data but is it possible to miss the prototype i mean miss something as out yes as i earlier said joseph you can miss certain things out but it is advisable not to build just one persona build multiple and then keep researching on your customer base to have an understanding or to know more about the kind of people who buy from you and then you can better your persona as you move on. Now, Joseph Lai. Joseph Lai says, Hello, sir. Please, will you term the cultural background or traditional lifestyle of your targeted audience as the psychographic nature of them? Joseph, um, psychographic has to do with the mind or mentality, the way they think. And... Um, Cultural background, I think with cultural background, maybe I'll put this under demographics rather than psychographic. And uh, yeah, yeah, cultural background or traditional lifestyle. I'll be first to admit that sometimes the psychographics and the demographics can confuse you because you see, when we are talking about psychographics, you're talking about how they think. But how people think often influences how they act. So sometimes even where they decide to stay, may be influenced by their psychographic that's how they think so it will be up to you to decide where you would want to categorize certain things but certain things are clear as in if you want to know um, maybe let, let's say you have a customer persona and you feel a certain group of people who think that for you to succeed in life you would have to present yourself in a certain way you would have to talk to people in a certain way you would have to behave in a certain way when you are in a certain position you are talking about their psychographic how they think there's some people who feel if you're using a car you would also always have to service it each month take it to the um, filling station let them change the oil or check your brakes that is their psychographic nature how they think and there are those who say see there's no need to go to the mechanic. So that is also their psychographic. I hope, I hope, uh, so that's what we are talking about over here. I, I don't know if I have been able to 
clarify it for you, Joseph. But if not, please go ahead and then let me know. Um, Joseph says, oh, Joseph Lai again. He says, please, can one classify potential or future buyers as target market? Yes, your, your target market, basically, they are your current and potential or future buyers. So, yes, you, you can do that, Joseph. You can do that. Stephanie, yeah, baby. Ah, yeah, baby. You made me remember um, that song, yeah, bro, that die and dream, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, sir, please, I wanted to know if it is possible to deal with just a target market as a whole based on the product you want to introduce into the market and not zoom into the target audience. Okay, yes, um, yeah, baby, you can do that. You can choose to focus on your target market rather than the target audience. So for um, refreshing purposes, um, when we talk about target audience over here, we are talking about the subset, as in the subset in the main set, which is the target market. Now, although you can do that, yeah, baby, what, what would happen is you are... Normally, when, when people do that, sometimes they feel... Um, I don't have the money to um, target or focus focus on one target audience or two target audiences. So I just want to just do one for all. Maybe an ad that will target everybody. Normally, the challenge is it's difficult for you to create an ad that may attract every target audience. Because remember... They may have their psycho, different psychographics, different demographics, and whatnot. So, what may appeal to one target audience within that target market may not appeal to another target audience within that target market. So, maybe what you may decide then to do is focus rather on a target audience within the target market that you feel, as for this target audience, they are likely to give me my return on investment. And then when you get more money, you decide, let me expand. Because normally when you throw it out there like that, it doesn't help. Unless maybe your focus is just on awareness creation. Yeah, you just want them to know that you did. But if you're trying to get them to move to the next step, as in purchasing behavior, if you want to move them to the next step of the purchasing cycle, then... It would be advisable not to give a wholesale approach to your advertisement. So Claudia Darkon, Claudia says, does rebranding of a product or service help in remarketing? Because perhaps the product might be dying or making low sales. So you decide to change the packaging or add an active ingredient to the old product to attract new and old customers. So, Claudia, you want to know if rebranding helps in remarketing. Claudia, normally when we talk about remarketing, remarketing, that, that term came along with the internet, online marketing, online advertising, whereby advertisers track people who visit. Some, some people call it retargeting. Um, there's... there's um, should I say a, an argument as to whether remarketing should be used or retargeting? Some say remarketing, others say retargeting. Some say there's a difference. But right now, remarketing basically, we are talking about people visiting a certain website. They don't take action, they leave. And then the cookies that you have enabled, enabled on your website or in your app tracks these people to wherever they go. And then you keep showing them your advertisement again but rebranding as you have well explained over here is different so rebranding i'm i'm suffering to see how rebranding of a product or service helps in the remarketing considering how i have explained remarketing so, Claudia, if I do not get you, please get in touch with me again and let's see if we can explain again. So, I think 
that will be all for the questions for this round, which is knowing your audience. I hope I've been able to clarify the questions for you. So the next lecture will be available soon. So I hope you have subscribed. If you have not, subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you would know when a new video is uploaded. All right. Cheers. Oh, and I added this video so that you would not get bored. I hope you like it.